Not Hang on, live. we're already live. I am Nathan Chan, and I'm from Pratt Fertility. I'm the managing director of Pratt Fertility and Egg Donation and Surrogacy Agency in Canada. So today we are going to just let you see this cute little baby. Let's see this cute little baby. Say hi. Who's this baby? Wow. Mm. So whoever you are, you don't need to tell us your name, but tell us who are you and who is this little one here? Is this your own, very own little bundle of joy? This is not. So I was an egg donor with Proud Fertility and this is the baby that one of my egg donations resulted in. Oh. Yeah. Is that a little boy? How old yes, is that little, little boy? boy? And he is just over two weeks old and he's very chill, very smart. See how he looks at everything? Have you been in possession of this baby for a long time, or how long? <laughs> I just met him today. <laughs> how many hours have you been holding him? Probably like an hour and a half at this point. Nice. Yeah. You got a note of this baby. So let's yeah. just really continue our interview. So um, who are the parents who received your egg donations for this baby? So I donated um, with a known donation to a gay couple who live in Europe. Okay. And you said you mentioned you donated a couple times. Um, how does that work? Have yes, you... so this, the baby, um, he was from my first donation, um, and I have since done two others, um, same with Proud Fertility, and they were all three of them known donations, um, various Europe okay. and Asia. Oh, awesome, cool. Okay, so, yeah, so for, so for, for our viewers, um, when you do one egg donation, it's a directed donation to one couple, whether it's anonymous or known. It doesn't mean that when you donate one time and then mysteriously just goes to this couple and this person. So one donation, to one family. You drop okay. your there again. He yeah. doesn't need it because it's on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what brought you to egg donation? Can you share with us? Uh, so I really wanted a way that I could help and give back to just people who needed it. Um, and then what Speak really... Speak a little louder. Okay. What really uh, sold me on the idea was actually, you know, the babies after because I just kept thinking you know, one day, like, his parents are going to get to tell him the story of, like, we wanted you so badly, and we had to do this and this and this, and I just think, like, you know, how great for a baby to know that he was wanted and loved so much by his parents, and, like, I was like, okay, well, how can I not do that then, you know? Like, I want to be a part of that. <laughs> but do you have any children yourself? I don't, no. And do you want children, for example? Probably. I mean, <laughs> yes. <laughs> But I just, I really want to grill you in the sense that, like, yeah. since I've gotten to support you a few donations, like, like I mean, like, don't you want to donate first? Uh, don't you want to have your own baby first before donating? Mm. Or it's, it's just a weird yeah. thing to have a baby out there. <laughs> Every woman I ask, they want to be donor, like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to do that yeah. because my, my, my eggs, who knows what they're doing we with don't. it, right? I mean... I think that was actually something that known donation helped me with because you know I got to know the dads for this baby and you know the next one so you know it, it wasn't so much that my eggs were just out there in the world you know they created this you know this adorable little guy that now has you know two lovely parents who love him so much so that helped with it um, and also I mean as an egg donor with an agency like Nathan's, you get to set your own boundaries. I was able to say, I'm comfortable donating outside of Canada, and Nathan helped facilitate that, so. So you donated in Canada for recipients from outside yes. of Canada. You yes. didn't have to travel outside of Canada. No, no. Okay. <coughs> Good. Oops. Um, maybe the, do we have a different pacifier? Um, okay, so now, <laughs> what's the difference between holding this baby and say like Ooh. my baby or someone else's baby, your friend's baby. It honestly feels the exact same. Um, Oops. I think let's not drop it. <laughs> like so, I, you know, a lot of my friends have babies. My sister has a baby. Oh, you have big the wrong feelings. Way. This way. That is upside down. I don't use pacifiers. Okay. There. He doesn't want one either. Okay. There you go. Good job. Hey. Let's let's so, feature this little guy again. Yeah. <laughs> Oopsie. We've chilled out now. Hey. Look how cute he is. So when you hold this baby, it's just the same? Yeah, if honestly, like, you know, yeah, lots of my friends have babies. It feels the exact same as if, like, you know, I'm meeting my friend's baby. This isn't my baby. This is the baby of somebody that I care about. I'm happy for them. I'm happy that this baby exists and is in the family that he's in. But beyond that, I'm just like, you know. You mentioned that somebody in your family said, aren't you scared you're going to connect with this yeah. baby? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and I mean, that was something that got brought up a lot when I said I wanted to be an egg donor. So I think a lot of people have that thought, but 
honestly, like for me, it was just, you know, the, the doctor performing IVF doesn't feel any responsibility or connection. I am just removing a fertility barrier that the couple faces. I have no responsibility or, or claim to this baby. I just help somebody have their baby. Cool. So just to let you know, you have made major history in Proud Fertility. You are the first egg donor to be interviewed with the egg donor baby. Cool. How does that make you feel? I'm just so special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And is there a connection to this baby or the parents? We've talked a little bit about the mm -hmm. connection. Yeah, it's... You know, like I, yeah, it's just like if my friends had a baby, I'm happy for them and I'm happy for this baby to have the, the dad that he does. But yeah, I mean, I'm you speak so easily it. and it's so smooth as if this known donation thing was just the first thing that <laughs> you were okay with. So walk us through that. Were there any hesitations for doing a known donation? Yes, I actually started off really adamantly wanting to do an anonymous donation. Um, and part of that was I just didn't really understand how this process worked, um, you know, and I thought, you know, if I do a known donation, am I like babysitting this baby? Like, you know, and then, you know, I there also, are no parental responsibilities yeah, for you whatsoever. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, that's, again, one of the perks of having an agency and someone like Nathan to guide me through this process is he was able to really break down what it actually looks like to be a known donor. Um, and for me being a known donor over an anonymous donor, um, it was just a better choice for myself because I got to have this moment and I got to see, you know, I did these hormones and I did all these appointments and the, the retrieval, um, you know, so you do all of this stuff that maybe isn't really comfortable, but then you get to see, you know, two dads just in love with their little baby. So, mm -hmm. you know, it was the best choice for me because I got to have this happy moment and, you know, see those pictures of them in the delivery room with new baby. So, so for a known donation, there are ones where, Literally like this proud egg donor, they can have Sunday brunch, they can meet up every week if they want to. That's one extreme. There's also anonymous where you just don't ever know each other's identifying information. There's also no contact known donation where basically you know the dad's names or the recipient's names and they know the egg donor's name. Maybe you can also have different arrangements. Mm -hmm. So you said something about boundaries. Yeah. So do you talk to the different, different sets of intended parents regularly yeah. or certain timings different donations are different yeah. or how does that work um you know that is something that kind of just happens organically and naturally as you start to talk to them so the couple that i you know have this they have this little this guy thing, yep. um, this thing this, this child <laughs> <laughs> this, this one this this one little baby um you know we were able to talk a lot and get to know each other and i felt really comfortable with them and then you know there's others who whether it's a language barrier a time barrier or that's just the boundary that they hold you know we talk less you know there's some that might just give you just like the bare updates and then some are you know this is what i did this weekend right so and you're also in the position to change you know for this specific donation i decide that you know sure you can know me but i don't want to speak to you or connect with you until your child's 18 yeah. or until your child's 12. so it's really up to both parties it coming is. together having that mutual agreement yeah and i think that's what's changing that's how we at proud fertility are trying to change the landscape of known yes. egg donation yes okay so do you intend to keep in touch with this baby yeah and I, you know, we actually were just talking about it. it'll just be however it happens naturally right so of course i would love to see you know pictures of him on like his birthdays and see how he's growing and then i also just think that you know for him as, as a person when he gets older if he ever wants to meet me or just talk to me you know to learn more about himself and how he happened i think that's something that he has the right for so and how will you feel for example if let's just say the parents or the the baby ah, never oh. reach out to you would that hurt ah. you or would that negate the whole idea of how good no egg donation is i don't think so at all because you go into known donation i mean like after you educated me on it um knowing that you know human relationships especially with babies are very very complex and you can't plan out how it's going to happen so right now, at this moment, our intentions are to keep in contact with however feels best and natural and, you know, let little guy make his own decisions when that time comes. But it's not my baby. This, you know, I'm not family. So it's You're not the mom. Yeah, no. Like, <laughs> it is whatever the parents decide for their family. And it's whatever he decides when he is old enough. So hmm. as the egg donor, you know, I accept whatever decisions they make. And I am happy to be 
apart in whatever capacity that they want. That sounds so wonderful. You are very strong and confident in the way that you have um, let this play out. Yay. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about what's the hardest part of the egg donation journeys itself. Um, I think for me it was like just the hormones and the retrieval itself. Um, retrieval itself. What does okay. that mean? That is, so you go in, you get conscious sedation, so you are awake, um, semi-alert, um, hopefully not feeling any pain if your IVs are all done correctly. Um, and then they, you know, poke each little ovary follicle, hopefully suck out an egg. So it is- How do they remove it? It's a transvaginal needle. So the needle goes through a numbed vaginal wall. Um, one needle poke per follicle. And you got me, more eggs, you got more yeah, pokes. I had around like 40 pokes. <laughs> Yeah. On, like, per, and you can feel each poke. You can feel them. Um, you are numbed before, but mm -hmm. they don't. They numb the vaginal wall. They can't numb the ovary. That's where that conscious sedation comes into play. So I mean, the first time my IV was so that was placed. the hardest part. Yeah. How was it hard? <laughs> You're describing it, was, it like it was it just. It was just uncomfortable. It's a medical procedure. Um, you know, it's not going to be super comfortable. <laughs> but was it worth it? It was. <laughs> Just for you. Just I mean, for you. You also got to remember there's these surrogates out there that have just gone Absolutely. Through. Hats off. You know. The surrogates watching. Um, <laughs> Keto, the last thing is, would you recommend egg donation to others? And, um, and, and, and why, basically? I would, just because, I mean, you get to be somebody who helps out in the world, right? I think we all have a capacity to help others and a capacity to be a force of good and... I mean, why wouldn't you take that opportunity, especially when you have an agency like Proud Fertility and you've got Nathan to kind of guide you through it. How much did I pay you to say that? Just kidding. Nothing. <laughs> but seriously, oh, if you want to be an egg donor, yeah. look into any agency, look into our agency, yeah. do it independently if you'd like to, but really, oh, whoopsies. Yeah. You're all done. Are your, are your ovaries yeah. anything? Yeah. No, we're not. Oh. <laughs> okay, so you would recommend Yes, I would. Can I, can I hold them? Done? Yeah, you want to take them? Okay, let me hold Just this. as he settles down, you can take them. Let's do a little final pan out. How? I'll do one here. Here you go. Okay, so spy everybody. This is a proud egg donor and a proud... Egg baby? Egg baby and a proud <laughs> sorrow baby. Congratulations to the dads and thank you so much for joining us. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Someone press finish. Can you say finish? <laughs> How do I do that? Oh.